There are more guns in Australia now than before the Port Arthur massacre. A tragedy left 35 people dead and 22 injured. It took just 12 days for then Prime Minister John Howard to overhaul the nation's firearm laws. And 25 years on, he sits down with Sky News political reporter Andrea Crothers. I was at Kirribilli House in Sydney and uh, I was rung by my press secretary and he said, look, I've just heard about this, you better turn on the television set. Gunman kills 25 people in Australia's worst massacre. The situation remains tense at the Port Arthur site. There's no understanding of this. The Prime Minister, John Howard, tonight detailed sweeping plans to reform Australia's national gun laws. You moved so quickly to overhaul the gun laws. Did you ever think, though, that it could cost your career? No, I didn't really think about that. Um, I knew it was unpopular with some sections um, of my own coalition, but it was very popular throughout the country. And to this day, I still... Um, am stopped in the street, particularly by women with young children saying thank you for the gun reforms. But your Nationals counterparts, they took a huge political risk and the then Queensland Premier believed it cost him his job. Well, they were fundamental to the success of what I wanted to do. It was tough for them because there were sections of their constituency that resented what was being proposed who said, why should we, as law-abiding people, lose access to weapons that we have normally used or might normally have used uh, as farmers? And I understood that, but I also knew that unless we had a blanket ban, uh, we weren't going to achieve anything. You made a point of confronting those anti-gun control rallies. Why was that so important to you? I saw that as uh, part and parcel of my responsibility as a Prime Minister to uh, deal with people who had deeply held views. But during a rally in country Victoria, <laughs> John Howard came under threat, advised by his security to wear a bulletproof vest. Uh, I regretted it later because I, I didn't really feel threatened. And my recollection is that after I'd given my speech, I actually went down and talked to some of the people. Do you have any other regrets from that time? No, I don't. I'm, that's the only regret I have. In the 18 years leading up to the Port Arthur tragedy, there were 13 mass firearm killings. In the 25 years since, there's been three. A murder-suicide of a family of five in rural New South Wales in 2014. Another in 2018 involving a family of seven in Western Australia. And a bloody rampage in Darwin which claimed four lives in 2019. Australians own more guns now than before the Port Arthur massacre. In 1996, there were an estimated 3.2 million firearms in the country. Howard's buyback reduced that to 2.5 million. Data collated by Sky News reveals the nation is now home to 3.9 million guns. An estimated 260,000 of those are illicit. Of the almost 3.7 million which are registered, New South Wales has the most, accounting for a quarter. Queensland and Victoria are the next biggest gun toters. One of the criticisms of the reforms is that there's still, 25 years later, no effective national database whereby states and territories provide real-time data to track firearm movement. Should the Commonwealth have taken control for that reason? Well, the only way you can take complete control uh, in a situation like that, in a legal sense, is uh, to have a referendum, the wall of the Constitution and transfer the power. Now... That didn't prove necessary because the states agreed to what we put forward. Now, there are, there's been a little bit of fraying at the edges regarding the database, but, gee, uh, the, the ban has worked. But do you see that as a gap that needs to be addressed? I don't pretend to have followed every single uh, element of the so-called gap with the database, but what I do know is that the fundamental objectives of the national gun laws have, were achieved and those gains have been maintained over the last 25 years. I'll leave it to those now in power to, to uh, uh, deal with any uh, details where some fraying may have occurred.
Governments have made numerous attempts over the years to soften the gun laws. In 2018, the Tasmanian Liberal government secretly planned to, but backflipped amid public backlash. I don't think there'll be any serious attempt to water the laws down, but I do have the view that if there were, the wrath of the public would uh, be visited upon those responsible. Do you think we'll see an overhaul of US gun laws in your lifetime? I would hope and pray I do. I have my doubts, but I, I'd, I'd like to think uh, that it could happen.